Hello and welcome to the Matt Lagore Show. I am your host, Matt Lagore. Uh, on my show, I really enjoy talking about business and inspirational subjects, uh, mostly because I find the world today to be so disheartening at times, uh, it really can bring you down. So I like to talk about things that can bring you up. And one of my subjects, it always has been one of my favorites, is business. Um, and how do you become successful at business? Um, I, you know, there's lots of books, um, there's lots of seminars you can do. Um, you know, I think the first thing that comes to mind for people is, well, you got to work really hard and really long, like 90 hours a week is what it takes. And I'm not going to say that that wouldn't work. It just would be extremely tiring. Uh, if you're going to work 90 hours a week, that means you're going to work seven days a week. You're going to have no life, you're going to have no time with your family you're going to be lonely, and you're going to be exhausted. There's no way you can sustain that. My feeling on being successful in business requires a couple of things. One, it's going to be something that you're passionate about. Two, uh, you're going to, have to be, you're going to have to have a plan. Three, you're going to have to be organized, and then you're going to have to put the plan in action and be consistent. Now, I've seen uh, a lot of successful people, and I've been able to become friends with some very successful people. And today I have a, uh, my friend on the show. His name is Andy Dokus, and Andy has uh, been a mentor and a friend to me for several years. Andy has uh, been successful in several businesses, including network marketing, where he's made upwards of $10 million at it. And you don't even probably know who he is, but the, the uh, wait is over. Andy, welcome to the show. Oh, welcome to America. I'm presenting you to everybody. Right? Oh my goodness gracious, man. Thank so, you so much. I feel so privileged to be here. Well, right. thanks. I'm really, really glad to have you. you know, you've been a good friend. You've been a mentor to me, but not just to me, to a lot of people uh, mm -hmm. in, in the 20 years that you've been in business with network marketing and other businesses. Right. So, you didn't just do network marketing. You've done no. several businesses, right? Right. What, what's right. A, in, a, in a you know in a thirty second spot? Could you just run through them like what you've done? Yeah, absolutely. It all started with um, a, a desire and a passion for real estate. I enjoyed mm -hmm. real estate, and I also enjoyed cars. So I got into the auto body world when I was a kid, working for my brother, and then by age twenty one, I opened my own auto body shop and uh, had gone to school for electronics engineering, decided that wasn't for me, mm -hmm. sitting in a plant somewhere with my face in a computer all day. So um, worked my way through college doing auto body for my brother, ended up buying my own auto body shop when I was 21, and then um, started getting into real estate. By 23, I had bought an apartment building, believe mm -hmm. it or not, mm -hmm. just working hard and remortgaging the uh, auto body shop. Yeah. And then by 25, did it again, and. By 28, did it again. And really? Yeah, wow. built a bigger auto body shop with uh, service and also car sales. Yeah. And then got um, approached by the network marketing world. In amongst there a couple of times, uh, owning an auto body shop, you, get, you meet a lot of people. Sure. Yeah. And so I had been approached by network marketing a bunch. I had gotten involved with one company. Um, just didn't work out for whatever reasons. Kept going with my plan on the auto body, auto repair uh, auto sales scenario mm -hmm. and then ended up connecting with another company that did work mm -hmm. and over the next oh my goodness I hate to even admit it 21 years wow I worked uh, the the uh, network marketing world very hard yeah and uh, learned a lot about business sure a lot about business and that's where I made the majority of my money was mm -hmm. <laughs> in the network marketing world yeah and um, now we were talking about this a little bit earlier because of that wonderful privilege and residual income, it, it uh, allows me to help my wife with a business that she's passionate about. Oh, that's so, nice. Yeah. That's nice. So now yeah. you have the time and the freedom to be able to support your wife and work with her right. in her dream, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that's great. Yeah. And you guys really work well together. Oh, thank um, you. you guys are a very good, uh, evenly matched team, you thank know, you. in a lot of ways. You know, the guys, you know, you, you have your passion and you're good. Uh, speaking and okay. Jody's so well organized. Jody's a good speaker too, yep. you know. So, but you guys really work well together, which is Thank key you. to being successful, right? It is. It is. You know, it's interesting how you opened your show. You kind of said it all. It's like we can finish the show now and go home. <laughs> <laughs> I like to wrap my shows up fast. Matt you know? covered it all, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, even you, Matt, in business, um, beyond the show here, you own a traditional business and have had a lot of success. So, um, you know, you in your own right have got it going on. Well, thank you, Andy. I appreciate that. That's true. You know, Andy, the first time 
I met you, all right, um, I didn't meet you in person. Uh, I was working uh, in the networking business uh, mm -hmm. with, with, with you and your team. And I was struggling a little bit, and I was talking to someone, and they're like, well, you should talk to Andy. And I was like, well, what's his number? So they gave me your number, and I, I, looking back on it, I was like, this was really bold. I had never met you in person. And I said, and I called you up. Oh, really? I called you up, and I was like, uh, you were like, hello, this is Andy. And I was like, Andy, this, my name's Matt Lagore. You don't know me, but uh, you know, I'm in your, in your networking business, and I'm having a little trouble, and I could use a little help. And you were so gracious with me. You were like... <laughs> I'm glad, because I don't remember. This is <laughs> I know you don't remember this. And you were like, oh, okay, all right. Well, I'd love to help you, but mm -hmm. right now I'm in the middle of a golf game. <laughs> um, can I take your number and I call you back? And I was like, yeah, that'd be great. So you took my number and you called me back. Oh my all right? But after I hung up, I hung up the phone and I was like, wow, that was really bold to intrude on somebody without like a text or an invitation or anything but oh, you were so gracious about it yeah. i said you know what i know i'm gonna like this guy mm -hmm. this guy you i could tell you cared you cared you know? i do and i, I do. hope i, I didn't people. take any strokes off the game that day or anything i hope you played well i hope you weren't in the middle of like a crucial putt and everything i'm but. sure none of that mattered <laughs> <laughs> not with my golf game <laughs> But, you know, you're, you're like that with everybody. And one of the things that you're really good at is you're good at um, consistency. I think that if I had to say what I see your strength as, along with other things, but the consistency of doing something over and over again at the same time, the same way mm -hmm. that works diligently, but you always did it in a way that was easy. Okay. It wasn't like, okay, hey, everyone, strap in. We've got a 10-hour day ahead of us. It was yeah. like, hey, guys, we got, uh, we're going to work for about 45 minutes, and then uh, we got some food, and we got some, we're going to have some fun together and everything, but for 45 minutes, we're going to lock it down. Right. And we'd lock it down for 45 minutes. We'd get a lot of comps, and then we'd have a great time together. Yeah. So you're very organized. You're very diligent, but you're very um, consistent, too. I mean, am mm -hmm. I right about that? Would you say that that's one of your main strengths? Yeah, I think in, earlier in the show, you, you hit the nail on the head in so many different ways. Um, I think working smarter rather than harder mm -hmm. is important. That's mm -hmm. kind of what you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, bursts of energy. But then also, <clears throat> you talked about working 90 hours a week. I think that if an individual is serious about business and they have a startup and it's something they're passionate about and they're putting 80 or 90 hours a week in, in the beginning, mm -hmm. you can't do it forever. You have right. to have a life. Mm -hmm. But if you love what you're doing, you're not working mm -hmm. in essence, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So yeah. you can go a little bit crazy. Yeah. But <clears throat> then you got to get your systems in place and you have to be organized. You know, they say the fortune's in the follow-up yeah. and the devil's in the details. Mm -hmm. And um, my follow-up is something that's gotten me where I am and being very detail-oriented and knowing what's happening in business. You can't just be flying by the seat of your pants. You have to know what's going on. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, and a lot of things you said, reading books, listening to audios, attending seminars on whatever field that you want to be serious in. Mm -hmm. They say that the most uh, successful people are the people who are the most well-read. Yep. And I can legitimately say, Matt, for about the past 30 years, I've read out of some sort of a book every single day. Really? Yeah, that would be 100%. Wow. I never miss. Now, when you read, mm -hmm. like when you pick up the book to read, mm -hmm. how much time are you spending reading? Minutes. Minutes, I, yeah. Yeah, that way it takes the excuse out of the excuse pile. Yeah. You know? And the other thing I want to talk about is people and loving people and just behaving uh, and getting yourself to the top. But, you know, two to four pages a day. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's mm -hmm. all I read. And I've read a library two to four pages a day. You're not going to remember everything perfectly anyway. Yeah. But if you're reading two to four pages a day, you're feeding your mind all the time, just like feeding your body. You're not going to eat one day and then not for many. Well, that's the way I feel about reading. If you really want to become a pro in your field, whatever your field happens to be. Mm -hmm. So um, reading all the time. As far as uh, loving on people, so important. You know, I, I've always subscribed to the theory that you have to think big, but be willing to act small. So when an individual calls me, every person in the world is the most important person in the world to themselves, mm -hmm. and they should be treated that way. If you see a picture, and you, a group picture, and you know you're in it, who's the first person you're looking for? Oh, looking for me. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, and that everybody does the yeah, same thing. Yeah, of course, yeah. And it's because to themselves, they're the most important person to themselves, and they're the, you know, they are them, and, and they deserve to be treated properly. So I've always tried to make sure 
um, to never be too big for my britches and uh, be willing to get in the trenches and work with all the new folks yeah. uh, in the networking world. And now with my wife's uh, insurance business, there's a lot of tedious little things that need to be done that someone might think that um, isn't uh, something that an individual should be doing that's already gained a lot of success. That's a bunch of baloney. You've got to yeah. be willing to get right down there in the trenches. Yeah, that's right. You've got to be on there, willing to it, it, put, pull out a shovel and dig right next to the person, right next to you, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So You're good at that. You do time. that. Thank you. Yeah. So reading all the time is, is big, loving on people, being willing to act small, uh, being organized. It's all big stuff in business. But, you know, <clears throat> one thing that I heard in business, Matt, and I'm kind of rattling along here. so Go ahead. It's all right. Yeah. Um, is that the difference between success and failure is simple. The people who succeed simply do what the people who failed didn't do. Mm -hmm. And that was from one of my great mentors, uh, J.R. Ridinger, mm -hmm. who owns Market America, which was a network marketing company that I'm with. And um, the question, though, is, of course, the people who succeed are willing to do what the people who failed weren't willing to do. Well, that's yeah. kind of obvious. But the question is why? And uh, the answer is goals. The clearer the why, the harder you'll try. I learned that from a friend, Paul Denzel, years ago. The clearer the why, the harder you'll try. And uh, it stuck with me yeah. for years and years and years. So putting those goals out in front of you, really knowing why you want to do it, um, whatever your success level is going to be and whatever business you want to be successful in, you have to really be driven. And um, the clearer the why, the harder you'll try. You've got to have those goals in front of you to drive you to success. Yeah. Now, I want to just go to some whys I know that you have. I mean, obviously, everybody wants to make a lot of money. That's without a doubt, right? Mm -hmm. um, you need money to survive every day, to get by uh, for the future. There's all a lot of reasons to have money. Right. But... One of the biggest reasons to have money is because you need to support your family, right? Right. Now, you're not just you and Jody. You guys have like a merged family. Yeah. And how many children do you have? We have six in total. Six Between total. the two of us. Yeah. Wow. Wonderful people. Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah. how old's the youngest? The youngest one is eight. Eight years old. All right. Uh -huh. So, so you got you got your hands full. And then the, the oldest is twenty five. Twenty five. Wow. And she's in medical school. She's got it uh, pretty much wrapped up yeah. to be a doctor. Wow. Proud of her. Wow, that's great. Proud that's of great. Well. Yeah, Proud so, of well. but you found time. I mean, your kids don't just become successful because they just decide to be successful. They follow the path that their parents, you know, kind of guide them into, you know. It's kind of a tricky, it's kind of a tricky thing as a parent, isn't it? It's like, it come is. on, go down this way. But <laughs> yeah. they're like, I don't want to go that way, you know. So you've yeah. got to have to kind of like corral them in a way that's best for them, right? Yeah. Uh, and obviously what's best for them or best for you is them being happy and successful, right? In the end. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, regardless of what they ever do, we'll always be proud of all of them. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, you know, no one ever wants to listen to dad, but every once in a while, uh, they, they know what I've done. Yeah. So every once in a while, I'll go into this, uh, I want to have a serious talk with you mode. And I'll start talking about life and future and business and success. And it's really cute. It's cute to see the look on their face. Yeah. Now, do you find a responsive? Uh, oh, yeah, very yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. When I go into like this different mode, it's almost like dad left the room. Yeah. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, there's this guy here that I respect that I need to listen to. Oh, that's really nice. Cute. That's really nice. You know, I have a 27-year-old daughter, a 13 and a 10-year-old daughter. So the 27-year-old daughter is married. She's a dental mm -hmm. hygienist, and she's very like, you know, she's she would treat uh, you. She treats me like you would think a daughter would treat her father. She's very loving and kind, happy to see me and everything. But she's on her own. The 13-year-old, uh, pretty much, if I just say hello, gets annoyed with me. But that's 13, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the 10-year-old, she just couldn't love me more. There's no way, oh, you know. Cute. Yeah. So it's like, I really like, I see the stages of... The 10-year-old uh, will change. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very aware of that yeah. now after yeah. going through it twice. So I really soak it up, you know? Mm -hmm. I really soak it up. But, you know, it's funny, like, as a parent, it's like, sometimes you just have to sit there and go, okay, just, I understand. Yeah. I'll just be patient. Yeah. You know, another one, too, Matt, with regard to goals, of course, we have to feed our family mm -hmm. and we have to make a living and all that kind of thing. But I think that for the average American, they settle into that. Yeah. And then they fill their time with like social media, playing on Facebook and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And then that becomes their world. The next thing you know, the, the evening's gone by, they go to bed, they wake up tomorrow and do it again. Yeah. 
And another uh, big statement, and I have to give uh, J.R. Ridinger the credit for this, he may have stole it somewhere, but I certainly lived by it for years and years of my life, is that you have to dream big because you'll never be bigger than your dreams. Mm -hmm. So if people are targeting you know, staying warm and dry and having a meal and, and all of that, then that's what they're gonna get. But if they're at least shooting for the stars, the worst thing that's gonna happen is they hit the moon. We've all heard these kind of things yeah, before. Right. And you know, it might seem cliche and so forth, but having pictures of things that you want, it seems corny, but cars and boats and houses and stuff like that, and putting them in front of you, regardless of what society has told you, um, you know, oh, don't put those things out there, Matt. You'll disappoint yourself. That's for rich people. Yeah. Um, disagree with it because the more that you're, you know, they say you're, uh, you will achieve what your mind can conceive. Mm -hmm. Well, again, not cliche. That's a true statement. And what you think about the most is what you'll get the most of. And uh, the people you hang around with is where your economy is going to go. Mm -hmm. So, you know, reach to hang around with great people. Reach to learn from great people. Read great books. Put pictures in front of you of houses, boats, cars that's going to drive you to find the avenue to reach that success. Mm -hmm. Now, that, I'm glad you said that because that's one of the things I like to kind of say on my show is that um, not so much that 95% of people are wrong. It's that 95% of people are taught to think like you said, don't mm -hmm. disappoint yourself. Um, expect the worst, hope for the best. All right, that's another big saying, you know? It is. And 5% of people think completely different. They do and they expect the best. And they expect the best. Yeah. And they'll deal with the worst. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know? So that what you are what you attract, you want to attract the best. Yeah. So if you're watching the worst shows, if you're focusing on the worst news, stay away from it. Yeah, where are you going to go? Yeah, come home from work and read a few pages out of uh, a, a, either a positive thinking book, mm -hmm. um, whether it's Brian Tracy, yeah. one of my favorite books to break your family b blueprinting. A lot of people are stuck in their family blueprint, yeah. and their family blueprint are that rich people aren't nice people mm -hmm. and all that kind of thing, and don't disappoint yourself. All the things that we spoke about um, is a book called Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. I'll be looking for this uh, royalty, by the way. <laughs> T. Harv Ecker is going to send it to you. T. Harv Ecker, right? <laughs> and it's uh, the initial T dot yeah. and then Harv yeah. and then Ecker. Yeah. And uh, I've probably sold more books for him than anyone. <laughs> but because uh, I did do a lot of public speaking, as you know. Yeah. So, yeah, that's another thing I wanted to ask you about. So that wasn't, did you ever think that you would be speaking in front of 500, 1,000, it's sometimes 20,000 people at a time when you first were introduced to, you know, a network marketing business? None. I didn't think I'd be speaking did, in front of anyone. Did you have any aspiration for it? No. 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 All right. In fact, the first time I did a small home meeting, um, I was so upset I had to take Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> you know, I was so scared. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. were so anxious about speaking oh in front of uh, 10 dear. people, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what's just, just, for, just for the fun of it, what's the largest group you ever spoke in front of? A good 25,000. 25,000 people. And you yeah. know, the, I couldn't see the people because the lights were in my eyes. Yeah. So I was just having my own little party up there and uh, it was fun. <laughs> and at that time, it had been years of speaking in smaller sure. venues. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, several thousand was a kind of a popular venue. Yeah. A thousand was often. Mm -hmm. And then groups of 500 was like all the time. Yeah. So out of your, like, uh, your, your diligence, your, your passion for what you were doing came these like ancillary things on the side. So like you obviously became passionate for um, real estate. You yes. ended up with these apartment buildings, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And your, your auto body shop. Right. Then your passion for network marketing was obviously a residual income that pays you, will pay you for the rest of your life. Right. But then you got a speaking career that you got paid for too, right? I did, I did. And I don't mind saying I got paid a lot for yeah. speaking. But my speaking wasn't motivational, yeah. it was educational. Yeah. And when people showed up to uh, my seminars, unless they um, mentally checked out and decided they weren't going to learn anything today, that I rammed it into their head <laughs> of um, you know, different avenues. And it wasn't just all theoretical stuff on um, being positive and what we should do with our time. And I, you know, I don't think we're just being theoretical today. I think we're telling people, you should read books. You mm -hmm. should. Uh, listen to audios and stuff like that on the field that you want to be successful in, but you've got to get your goals out in front of you, which is another um, actual 
something that you need to do is get yeah. those goals in front of you. Mm -hmm. So we're not just telling you, oh, be positive here. We're yeah. telling you stuff to do. Mm -hmm. And at those seminars, we were telling people specifically what to do in order to be successful rather than just have a great attitude, go out there and get them. Yep. Smile a lot. Smile a lot. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. So it really, it comes down to, but that's a hard thing. The goals, like the desires, like what you really want for your life, that can be a real um, uh, stumbling block for people. Right. Because they get wrapped up in what they think they should want instead of what they really want. Right. Do you agree? Right. Yeah. And instead of doing something that's, hey, this is fun and I like this, they go, well, it, I don't know how well it's going to pay. Mm -hmm. I better find something else. Yeah. Yeah, that's sad sometimes. And a lot of times people do get wrapped up in things that don't pay very well. And uh, sometimes you might have to put those into the, uh, this is going to be my advocation rather than my occupation. Yes, right. Because I need to make money uh -huh. and try to find an occupation that you can get that passionate about mm -hmm. uh, if you really think it's a field that's not going to pay. Otherwise, if you're willing to sacrifice and, uh, and not get paid a lot, then that's your, your prerogative. But mm -hmm. I think what we're talking about here today is becoming successful. Yes. And being able to not only have a lot of money, but be able to have a lot of time. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, in, in our life, you know, the golf and the boating and the travel and all of that was important. Mm -hmm. um, we've put it behind us right now because getting Jody's business off the ground is our passion. Yeah. And that's where we're putting our time right now. Yeah. But with definitive goals, of where we're going. And this is a big one. You got to dream big because you'll never be bigger than your dreams. Yeah, yeah. So we've really got goals and dreams of where we're going, but we're willing to fight the battles to win that war. Yeah. So you're, you, you, you've been very successful at this. You've obviously, you know, you built the networking business. It paid you. You enjoyed a lot of time, a lot of free time, mm -hmm. uh, a, lot of, a lot of quality time with your family lot. and your friends, right? right? You go up to Lake Winnipesaukee uh, every summer, right? Every summer, yeah. Yeah, you enjoy that. Right. And so now you're ready to do it again, right? But you've got, you've got a time frame you in do. place, right? Yes. Because, you know, that's another thing I think People have a start, but they don't put the finish or the, the or the, the 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 goal of I'm going to do this for five years. Right. And in five years, I want to be at a certain place. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not, then I'll reevaluate. Right. Right. And, and is, right. Am, I, am I right? Do you? Yeah. And what happens to so many people is it, not only do they not have that other hand there as far as the finish point, but by having no finish point, they stop way over here. Mm. So they don't get close to the finish line because they weren't willing to fight long enough. Yeah. With um, you know Jody and I in her startup business, and we'll let uh, her tell you all about that. But we have basically a five-year goal to get to the finish line and get to a point. We know a typical business one to three years will be profiting, mm -hmm. but um, we, we're looking at it even as a five-year goal, which is a little tough when you're 53, you know, to yeah. be putting a five-year goal out there and have lived the life that I've lived, but you know, we know that we're, where that'll take us for the rest of our life. Yeah, yeah, right. and hey, you know, you, you never know. Uh, I mean, nowadays people live 80, 90, you know, they're saying people will live well into the hundreds soon. Right. Uh, and it's, it's reasonable to believe that. And it, what, I, I don't know the exact saying, but it's something along the lines that when you're young, you know, money's not as important. But when you're old, it's extremely important. Yeah, it is. And I look at, like, my parents who are elderly and then they're mid to late 80s. Mm -hmm. And my dad was very successful. But he's still, the money thing is on his mind a lot. Yeah. On his mind a lot because... You get older, care, and everything goes up. So it's sad. It is. It's sad. It is. But you know, they say money isn't everything. But in the United States of America, right, keeps you warm, keeps you dry, keeps you fed. We didn't make the rules, but we have to live by them. That's right. That's right. So let's just go back for a second. We know T. Harvecker mm -hmm. uh, is a, 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 a the uh, millionaire mind, right? Secrets of the Secrets millionaire, of the millionaire mind. mind. And it's not just about being a millionaire. It's yeah. about a way of thinking. Yeah. And a way of thinking that will change everything that you do in life. I recommend read it. Yep. Excellent book. You can also take, he has a free course that goes with that. Mm -hmm. You can go for free to this, to, to this program. Yeah. I did it. Okay. Uh, I, 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 um, I splurged and I spent like $150 or something or $200 okay. and I got to sit up front. Marvelous. You could sit in the back for free and listen to the same stuff. But I said, I want to get up front. So I got up front. Excellent. Now, what's a, one more book that you would recommend? It's similar uh, to Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Uh, it's one of my favorites. And I'm going to say uh, by Brian Tracy, and it's called Maximum Achievement.
next week. I love that one also. Right. There's so many good books out there. Yeah. Um, but that's another one that'll, and these are both books on ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. And then you want to go into books in your field. Yeah. Whether you're, you're in the insurance field, you want to find great books by people who have been successful and where you're going there, mm -hmm. or whether it's cars, real estate, mm -hmm. et cetera. Mm -hmm. Andy, I want to thank you for being on the show. You've been a great guest. You've been very helpful to me and many uh, of, of, uh, of our friends or our friends now, they weren't at first, right. but that's your right. friends. And, uh, uh, continued success to you and Jody. Well, we've only just begun, and you know, having people like you in our life, Matt, is just so important to us. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Yeah. We All really right. Appreciate you. You're welcome. All right. Well, thank you for watching the Matt Lagore Show. You can check me out on YouTube. Uh, just go to the Matt Lagore Show. Uh, also on Facebook, the Matt Lagore Show. You can be my friend. I have uh, the obviously the videos are on YouTube. The videos are also on Facebook. But on my Facebook page, I put a lot of other inspirational videos on there too that you might like. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.